Hi there, my name is Bob Martin, the owner of rcsub.com. I am going to be taking the time to show you a little bit about remote control submarines, a little bit about the basics, the watertight cylinders, and how they operate. Hopefully it will be of use to you. What we are going to be looking at is a Thor design hull in 196 scale. This is a Sturgeon class submarine. This is a small world models watertight cylinder, uh, single output. This is a, a fairly simple watertight cylinder compared to a lot of other ones that are on the market. Uh, for comparison, this is an Engel Akula class uh, dry hull submarine. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a complicated piece of equipment. Uh, lots of electronics. This is the, uh, the dive board. This is the board that controls all of the dive functions of the submarine. Piston tank dive chamber, uh, batteries, servos, another piston style ballast system, retractable bow planes, operational periscopes, very complicated model compared to the sturgeon. I'm going to concentrate on the sturgeon, show you a little bit about it so you can understand how they work. This is uh, the watertight cylinder innards. Uh, it's a fairly simple unit. There's two servos here, one for the dive planes and one for the rudder. This is the output for the main drive motor. Underneath this equipment rack is your main power battery. It's a 7.2 volt standard RC battery. This is your speed controller right here. This is an electric electronic fail-safe unit which detects the loss of signal and automatically blows ballast in case of loss of signal. This is a subtech APC3 automatic pitch controller and your receiver. Uh, this is all connected through the cylinder itself to the ballast servo and inside the ballast chamber you can see the propel canister that houses the liquid air that blows your ballast tanks and the cam assembly that controls uh, whether to blow or vent the ballast tank. Now we're just going to take a, a quick look inside the model the entire top is held on with a single screw in the back. It simply comes off. The top of the hull can get removed. You can see inside the flotation foam. Uh, the stuff in the bow that you can see there is above the water line. Uh, affects the trim of the boat in submerged trim. Uh, the stuff that is on the sides is foam that uh, is in place during all times when the submarine is in the water. This is the interior of the boat. Uh, as you can see, I used some spare, cheap Chinese bits that uh, were too soft for any practical use. I glued that in the base of the unit for ballast. Uh, this is a Velcro strap that holds the watertight cylinder in place once it's installed. Uh, nylon dog bone that transfers force between the watertight cylinder and the uh, output shaft of the model. These are the control linkages for the rudder and for the dive planes. Uh, of course the uh, the propeller you can see the main shaft spinning there. Now this model is running off a Futaba Skyport 6 channel radio. I'm going to turn the power on here. You can see the power bar going up. Now what I'm going to try to do uh, with one hand, uh, connect the main drive battery you can see the electronic speed controller showing that it has power. From the radio we control um, the dive plane outputs, ballast servos, throttle, forward and reverse, and the rudder. The spare channels can be used for things such as periscopes, uh, sound modules, torpedoes, or any other function that you could think to put on a submarine. I'm going to uh, just test out the failsafe here and I will show you how that works. This is the ballast servo right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the radio off and what you should see after a, a few seconds is the ballast servo trip to blow the tank. I'm going to turn it off right now.
And there you can see it just tripped, blowing the surface, the model to the surface of the water uh, because it has lost the signal from the radio. We'll turn the radio back on now, and the servo goes back to the appropriate spot. So theoretically what happens is the model loses contact with the radio, blows its ballast, gets back up to the surface to the point where you can at least recover it uh, and hopefully recover radio control. All right, so what I'm going to do now is uh, put the innards of the water tight cylinder into the cylinder itself. This is the antenna wire that I'm going to try and keep as high as possible uh, to the top of the watertight cylinder. I'm going to make sure that the top of the watertight cylinder is oriented upwards. And I'm simply going to slide the equipment tray into the cylinder itself. Just got to make sure that you tuck the wires in, that there's no binding. You can pull the ballast servo lead in so that it doesn't get bound up inside and just slide it in nice and carefully and pushing it in there we go the uh, interior cylinder is now